Um, how many people actually read the story? Very good. So it won't be that hard to teach because I don't have any questions or anything unless you just want to ask. Nevertheless, um, this story was written um, back in eighteen in the eighteen hundreds by it was written by somebody. It was rewritten by Gabriel Marquez, but. Um, Vladimir G. discovered it on a pirate scroll written in hieroglyphics. hieroglyphics. And I was going to show you, um, this is hieroglyphics. And it's all written, this is how it, without the words, apparently under. So everybody know what hieroglyphics is. Wait, wait, slow down. Wow. That takes so long. Right? Yeah. I looked at it and I tried to relate to it. I tried to relate it to what's going on now, but I couldn't. Unless if the words weren't under here, then I would never know what was going on. I just see a few birds, <laughs> ties <laughs> like ribbons here, and no, no water, no blood, no I mean waves or anything. Well, how did we figure out what was written? Well, um, uh, you didn't say it out loud. <laughs> you can't <laughs> <laughs> If the words weren't under it for me, I wouldn't know what was going on. But back in ancient, I would have known. <laughs> <laughs> I was yes. going to say that we understand it because we were able to decipher some from the Rosetta Stone. And one of the big things about hieroglyphics is that the uh, type of bird conveyed and the uh, way the symbol was, where it was located, all really works a lot to convey the meaning behind each symbol. Because they, they have a very spiritual people. Now, now we would, but then. Well then too, they understood because that's all they had to go on. Because this story was written before the alphabets. So they pretty much knew what was going on. I guess, and then too, what I'm thinking the whole time I've been trying to do this is, I think they just came up with some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and put it together. And just kept putting the same thing. But anyway, um, it was really pretty much, thank you. It was written, um, I mean, it was rewritten by Gabriel Gabriel for um, elementary children and bedtime stories and stuff like that. Um, the story is about a voyage being, uh, they went to, they tried to go to a gold mine to see the pharaoh and da 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 da. But they were shipwrecked. <laughs> so can you relate to what just happened a couple of weeks ago? And what happened a few years ago? Is with the cruise? Yeah, with the cruise. I think they were shipwrecked. They didn't have the same storm because they actually predicted this storm. That storm, this storm, I mean, this thing that happened over there was not a storm, but it was just something that went on. But the Titanic, that I think it kind of relates. I, I, was it a storm? No, it iceberg. iceberg. It was an iceberg. Okay, it was still a storm to me. Because it was a tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> it was something tragic that happened. And nobody really... Well, when that... This one person came back from the people that were on here. On this uh, ship. And then the, the guy came. And it's kind of spiritual. And uh, a little bit... It's Well, the way it was written... Um, it was written for people that it was kind of trying to inspire people and assure people, but it was also written like for a boastful type situation because um, the guy, this guy, um, um, what is it? Marquez, no, Marquez? Yeah. No, not Marquez. Oh, I'm missing. Well, he was into sharing, and I mean, uh, oh, yeah. Okay, we said that the story was written for people with a sort of boastfulness about themselves, because apparently the author had to do had something to do with buying and selling trade and perfume and spices because you know at one point like at the end 
of the boy at the end before the God sent him back or the serpent sent him back. He gave him a lot of incense and uh, perfumes and stuff like that. Um, and pretty much told him he was going to be wealthy when he get back with his family. And don't worry about anything else because this is what's going to happen when you get back, if you take this stuff back with you. And they noticed that he tried to give him something, but he was like, oh, don't worry about me. Uh, I'm going to be okay. You'll be fine if you just go on to take this, what I have, um, and you'll be fine. So he was just pretty much saying that he was going to be rich when he take the incense and perfumes and stuff back. So, um, at the end, I'm all the way to the end already. At the end, can somebody say that word, those three words? Son of Aminia. I can't hear you. Son of Aminia. The, the, what's the first word? Amini. Amini. Son of Amini. 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 Yeah. Yeah, that was a scribe. Amen, yeah. What would you get out of that? What, those three words. Those four words. Well, the first word and the last word. Like son of the, the priest. Of the don't, don't say what was in it. Don't say what was in it. Life, prosperity, and health. No. <laughs> son of a priest, like the name of the son of a priest. Maybe. And isn't that the name of the scribe who wrote this? Yeah. That what? The what? The name of the scribe who wrote this? Yeah, but it was really unknown who wrote it. Because it was found in a magazine, I mean, in the museum by Vladimir. But it kept saying it was unknown who really wrote it, where it came from. It came from the Middle Kingdom. But they really didn't just come out and say that this person wrote it, which he was known to probably write it. But. You know, and this is the guy that was described. That was the guy that was rich. So that's why I was kind of known that he wrote it. But it, I mean, not known, but said that he wrote it. But is it really known that he wrote it? Did it say it was unknown? Because I know at the end of a stila, they said that you know it's known the author, the author's name or something like that. Well, it's it said different people. It said unknown for a long time researching it. Then it came up with this the son of Amenia. Amenia. Wrote it. Mm -hmm. But, but then he said he was the scribe. That doesn't mean he came up with a story. He just wrote it wrote down. It, right. <laughs> wrote it in hieroglyphics. It looks like um like someone's actually wishing someone like good luck and prosperity yeah. and health. That's what I was that's the main thing I was thinking, just yeah. wishing them love, health, you will have you know, when you prophesy something, you'll prophesy something positive, which would be hell. Yeah. Um, any questions? No hard questions, please. <laughs> no, I got you. Uh, you know, what, what do you think about the serpent who presented himself as the Lord of points? Do you find any connection between the actual land of, of Punt being, they, they they were trading with Egypt back then, you know, did, did you think it was interesting that they were portrayed as like a land of riches in the story? Well, honestly, I think that, okay, for him to be out there, and notice how he got there. He got there by a, a storm, which was the like, well, the girl came to him, but he wasn't really born born there. So why would the land dis dis disappear and turn into to water afterwards? I think it may have been a land of which, uh, you know, where a lot of people just wouldn't be because if you come there, you might get rich. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm not the surfer, maybe. It sounds like a story of either like Atlantis or like um, the Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden. Eden. Yeah. First thing I thought about when they talked about the serpent. Yeah. Well, my favorite thing about the story was the uh, 
how there was just such a disparity of understanding between him and the God because he's talking about all that he's going to give to God and the God is just not as not concerned about it right. because he's like I am of this it's uh, beyond me and of course speaking on the uh, the land not being there I believe it was more of a land that was not meant for humankind to be upon and it was fate to put him on those shores but he would not be able to ever reach him again the only reason the rescue party could reach him is because they were divinely ordained to actually reach him and rescue him. Yeah. And that's your answer. I'm sorry, I couldn't give you an answer. Yeah. I mean, me personally, I would love to go. To, I don't want to get there the way he got there, but I would love to go there and then come back and wouldn't have to worry about stuff. But hey, we all would, I'm sure. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you.